click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will talk about some weak levels of consistency. Till now we have discussed about the isolation like the serializability, repeatable read, read committed and read uncommitted. Now we will talk about some weaker level of consistency rather than serializability. So we will define all these consistency levels elaboratively. As we know that serializability is the least standard that is maintained by SQL to go for the isolation. Now there are also possible some weaker level of consistency which is weaker than serializability but it still can be maintained to offer the consistency. One such level of consistency is in degree 2 level of consistency. The degree 2 level of consistency is mere just like in two-phase locking protocol which is for acquiring a lock and then releasing a lock on a particular data item, but it need not to maintain the two-phase of this protocol. So it also needs two modes of lock. One is the shared mode S and also is the exclusive mode X. So this two mode, that is to read and data item, we need to have the shared mode and if we want to read and write the data item, then we need to acquire the exclusive mode. But the degree two level, the consistency level is weaker because it is not maintaining that all the locks can be acquired in the growing phase and it can be released in the shrinking phase. So that the level is the degree two level. So how can we define this? Let us see this example. See for the transaction T1, we are first having a shared lock on that item Q, read that data item and then unlock that data item. Now we can see that the transaction T2 is performed after T1 has unlocked the data item Q. It had exclusively locked it, read it, write it and then unlocked it. Now the data item it is reading, it is the old value that the same one T1 has read. So now we can see that T1 is again performing this lock as Q, read Q and unlock Q. Now obviously this is not serializable because the transactions are not grouped together to perform its operation. It is also not performed on repeatable read because all the writes are not performed onto the last of the transaction and it is also not mentioned on a committed level on a read committed because the right are there before that there is a read and after that there is a read from transaction T1. So now it provides a degree level of consistency with the shared and exclusive lock. As we can see it is in consistent one, not serializable, not repeatable read and also not read committed. So this is known as a degree two level of consistency. Now what is the cursor stability in this degree 2 level of consistency? See suppose this transaction T1 and T2 is being performed in a schedule S that we have defined in an relation say instructor and the data item say department. So now the card service having sell the department attribute and the data item it is for shared lock providing it, read it, then another transaction T2 will have an exclusive locket and then read and write that data. Now what will happen, we can say that the department on this instructor relation is not cursor stable because one cursor is there for every iteration of this department on a shared mode for the transaction T1 or the first part of this transaction T1. Now for the second part, it needs an exclusive mode lock again for every iteration until and unless the transaction is being committed. So what is happening here that the degree two level consistency doesn't provide the cursor stability because whenever we are having shared mode as well as exclusive mode, then this one will be a part of this exclusive mode cursor which is not desirable. Now the next issue is this concurrency control with this user interaction. Say for an airline user system that we are using. In a wave interaction, it may possible that user A and B both are accessing the same airways at the same time. So now my user A and my user B both are sharing the SIT information. So they provide the S lock on SIT 
and they also provide the X lock on set. So till now it is not being a problem. But say when the A wants to select a particular set from that operation on this airline. So it goes on an exclusive lock by upgrading it to the set data item. Now, while this X lock is being performed on this A, we cannot have B that the shared lock anymore. That means the B is forced to abort the transaction that is being performed on this TI on the side of B. So now we need to roll back again for B to wait for the moment that the X lock on this seat is performed or not. Now, even if these two conflicting operations are not or it is, it will be forced to abort or roll back it. Now, say suppose that A has not selected any set in this exclusive log, but it has gone to the section where it will select a particular set. Now, after that, it can also happen that the payment failure of this particular user A has been performed. Or it also can happen that it is taking a much longer time to select the sets for user A. So in both of these cases, we will have the transaction B will stop or halt because it cannot select any sets, whether it will be a faster one, a successful one, rather than A because it is having an exclusive lock. So if we could have mentioned this particular two-phase locking protocol that lock will be acquired and maintained until the commitment of a transaction, then this type of problem could be avoided. Now as we are using a weaker level of consistency, then the user A and user B cannot have all the concurrent features on this interaction to a particular real-time site. So what we can do, we can either split the transaction into two interactions. That we can have one interaction for the selection of seat and after that it has selected the seat and finally moved to the payment section, it will go for an exclusive lock. And other than it is will be considered as a normal operation, go for a shared lock. So if it is also that the weather or a user is toggling between the seats for selection, another user can select the seats at the same time. So now it will also create a problem. Say for an instance that user A is selecting the A row seat number one and two, and user B is also selecting the, those same rows at the same time. But finally user B has moved to some other seats and user A wants to put in those seats. So it will be a problem because the same time two of the sets are selected being at the same time. So now what we can do to this, we can add a version number to our tuple type of locking. So here the records will be recorded as in tuple time. So the tuple locking level will provide us with that extra field with it that is one version number. So now for each update on the tuple, the version number will be checked. If it is a match on the version number that the interaction is telling, that means say user A and user B having two interactions and having two version numbers. And in the updation field, there will be one current version numbers. So if the version numbers of the user who has gone to the payment section matches with each other, then only the tuple will be updated and then we can perform the increment on the version number to the next. That means now the version number will be incremented. Now if the version number do not match with the version number that the user is providing, then it will roll back the transaction and abort that particular operation. So now we are having the transaction TI rolled back on that particular data item because the version number on that tuple is not matching with the other version number. Now what is the importance of this version number? Because now we are having each tuple with the same value with the different version numbers so that we can interact with different users in that scenario. Now we can compare this scheme with a concept of snapshot isolation where we are checking a particular section of the database and then isolate the database based on some concurrency control. Now it is also referred to an optimistic concurrency control because all the read operations and write operations are performed at the last of these transactions so that we are having the payment page at the final exclusive mode lock. 
So this is also using the index level locking in the part of this transaction. Say for an instance, TI is having a read queue that it is performing on a particular database and TJ is performing a write queue. That means say the instance on the user who is selecting the set, another user who is payment for the set. Now it will hold the sets back until and unless the payment is successful. So the user A has selected the row 1, A and B and he has gone to the payment page with an exclusive mode lock. Now the TI has the same data item with a shared lock. Now until and unless the payment has been finished, the TI on user A side which is showing that still the operations on the sets A1 and AB is available to us. But once the payment will be successful, then A1 and A2 will be unavailable for the user B. So this type of discrepancy is allowed in some weaker level of consistency because it cannot go beyond that. Now the systems like Hibernate produces some system where we can hibernate this TI read queue. That means it will not perform or go to sleep until and unless the payment page is being successful. So either two of these operations then we need to allocate. One is to use a particular section as the allocation. Other we can isolate each part of the tuple and then store it into two different sections. So if that isolation made on the tuple not the attribute then we can have the version numbers attached to it just like we have described. But if the isolation is made on the field or the attribute not the tuple then a higher level of consistency which is not serializable but better than this degree 2 level can be achieved by putting conversation between two attributes. Say for the seat number and the payment info for the user are two attributes and it can compare based on the index on the seat number that can refer to the payment section so to see that if the payment has been done or not. So if this type of link or the conversation done between two systems then we go for an hibernate on two different parts of the system that the payment section will be hibernated until and unless it is selected or the seat section will be hibernated until and unless we are having the payment. In some time when we want to select the seat we can see that from two different sites or if we are logged in from two different systems once we have selecting the statement on the states and we have gone to the payment page and on the other system me as a user again selecting those sets it will be so as unavailable because the set has been considered for the payment. Some systems like the cinema reservation doesn't make this so. It restricts themselves by giving the sets more time available to the user or the viewers because they consider it until and unless a payment section is being made, we are not considered your seat has been the confirmed one. So in this way, a degree two level consistency that we can apply to lesser than the serializability, but somewhat to provide the consistency between transactions in some shorter or the weaker level of the databases. So the practice in which we can use this type of consistency, the cursor stability, the user interaction, the hibernation, all of this as an optimistic concurrency control. So that is all for today. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.